Now, when Muslims of a particular devotional tradition assemble together to recite a particular wird in company, they may do this in the mosque, which is still common in many Muslim countries. More usually, it will be in a private home or a special meeting house called Azawiyah. This is the usual Arab word. Literally, it means a corner. It could be translated as a lodge or a retreat. Um, the common Persian equivalent, which you'll often see, is Khanqa. And this just means a place which is set aside for <coughs> mystical aspirants of a particular tradition, followers of a particular spiritual guide. And in these environments where they are amongst their own, they develop these traditions and it provides a, a safe context for the expression of the more often ecstatic aspects of, of, of religion, of those who have been carried away on the ocean of divine love. If you've looked at some of the uh, medieval Persian miniatures, which have um, facsimiles in the library here, you'll see that very often medieval Muslim mystics are standing up and um, in apparently ecstatic postures. When you see the real thing, it's not a kind of um, uncontrollable bubbling over. It's still a fairly sober phenomenon, but people are really wrapped and almost overtaken by the, the electricity of, of the divine love. The best known form of this upward movement, which is sometimes referred to not very accurately as a form of spiritual dance, it isn't really, um, is that which was founded by the great Rumi himself, certainly in the West, one of the best known of all Sufi mystics, who founded the Sufi rite known as the Dawran, or at least adapted it in a particular form for the use of his own followers. Um, Occasionally, members of Rumi, Rumi's order, which is known as the Mevlavia, visit the West, and it's possible to see um, ceremonial public performances of this rite, which is actually very beautiful. These are the people referred to in, say, Victorian European literature as the whirling dervishes. In fact, they don't whirl at all. They move around in a very slow and dignified way. And the person who is doing this wears a long white robe, a long beige felt cap, and he will hold up his right hand like this, which is to receive the mercy from heaven, and holds his left hand down like this, which is to distribute it to earth. So he is the representative of man in this sense of, of pontifex, as bridge builder, as, as khalifa between heaven and earth. And as he does this, he turns around, which mirrors the, the turning movement which exists in the cosmos generally, and also calls to mind the, the ecstasy of the saint. It's said that the origin of this ceremony, which is probably the most spectacular and best known mystical ceremony in the Muslim world, is uh, an inc incident in the life of Rumi himself, a uh, famous 13th century mystic who lived in Turkey, that once when he was discoursing with his students, he was walking through the goldsmith's bazaar in the city of Konya, where he lived, and he heard um, the hammer of a goldsmith, a little thing, and the goldsmith himself was a saint, and the hammer was going tap, 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 tap. And Rumi, in some incommunicable way, picked up that the saint was actually expressing, even in his work and his craft, the divine name, Allah, Allah. And he immediately started to turn like this in a state of ecstasy. And subsequently, his followers have emulated him. That's the origin of the, the, the whirling dervishes, so-called. Usually, only six or seven of them will actually do this in a group directed by a guide. Um, very often you'll find that it's accompanied by a small orchestra. I mean, Islamic music is a very diverse phenomenon. In, the, in Rumi's tradition, there'll be perhaps five or six musicians, including things like the Eastern equivalent of lutes and mandolins, a zither, a couple of drums. Um, and the ceremony begins with the invocation of blessings on, on the, the Prophet. And then the dancers rise to their feet. They take off black robes, which symbolize attachment to the world and also symbolize the grave. And underneath there are these pure white robes, which symbolize the, the purified human being and also our state of the resurrection. And then as the music goes, they begin to turn. And I've actually got a recording made in the 30s of some of their music. The quality is not very good, but it will give you some idea of the sophistication of this tradition. It's 
actually after this. I'll play you this one first. This is an Algerian form of dhikr. It's quite beautiful. Characteristic of what you'll hear in one of these zawiyas, a Sufi lodge. Ecstatic poems of love for God and his prophet. Saying things like, the people of dhikr, of divine remembrance, are completely annihilated, completely lost in their beloved.